Good morning, guys. Good morning from Deer Camp, Nevada. A little chilly out this morning. Got the buddy heater fired up. Slept great, because the creek's here. Duh. And uh, my dad's gonna get the coffee started. We're gonna go find us a big old mule deer buck. We are going to glass, 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 which I'm super excited about. We have a game plan in place. We're gonna go check out one area that Casey's very familiar with this morning. Kind of exhaust all the efforts there. And if we don't turn up one that really gets me pumped up and excited, we have another area for our plan B that we'll check out either later today or maybe tomorrow. Come along with us, join us. It's uh, the 16th of October and it's a good time of the year to shoot a mule deer with your rifle. And that is exactly what we plan to do. <laughs> Water, frozen. I <laughs> uh, looked at the truck, 25 is what it's saying. 25? 25 degrees. Beautiful so, day to yeah. hunt mule deer. Guys, remember what I was telling you yesterday about staying hydrated? Drink 36 ounces of water with one package of Mountain Ops Ignite and you will be good all day long. I'm trying to do that, but all the water is frozen. The mule deer is talking to you. It's important that when you pour your mountain off, you just pour half of it onto the Yeti cooler. Here's the creek. So we were just beyond this when we spotted the Brian spotted deer up here on the far yeah. ridges over there. And this right here is what reminds me of deer hunting with my dad as a kid. Old fashioned glazed donuts in the pick em up truck. I think I will. As good as I remember, we would go uh, old fashioned donuts with chocolate milk done. Casey. Okay, what have we been doing this morning? Just just uh, looking at the country. <laughs> Exciting. So I hunted this area, like I said, four years ago. And uh, where I killed my deer is a great little spot. A lot of, it holds a lot of deer. Well, I'm not a, the most organized person. And when I say not the most, not organized at all. And I have the waypoints saved on my own old Google Earth or my old uh, Onyx chip in my GPS, which who knows where that's at now. So uh, it took us about 45 minutes of me telling these guys where to go and not being right for me to realize finally I found the road that we're supposed to be on. So I just want to show these guys the country, which we saw a lot of it. Now we're gonna go hunting. That's the plan. Got our first legal bucks. Three of them in a group. My dad actually spotted them, but through the binos he couldn't tell what they were and then Casey saw them on the uh, old vortex. Threw the phone scope on them and getting a little video, although it's kind of a bit shaky in the breeze. But it's cool to see them. They really, they really stand out on the sagebrush in the sunshine, but man, when if there's any kind of um, shady spots, they are harder to pick up by quite a bit. It's a good sign. We're just getting started. First little stopping point, and we're gonna just kind of move along and 
kind of a big giant canyon with all these little side cuts and draws and the goal is to try to drive down stop glass back up in them and if we can find something then we can put a game plan together but I don't know a lot of times uh, we've done a lot of backcountry style hunting where we're just on our backpacks going for days and days and days or hiking up covering a lot of country on the legs but this particular hunt is going to be a bit more of uh, driving around glassing and then if we turn something up throw the packs on go after it just because of the nature of the way this country is and how how big and vast it is it's way more efficient to drive glass drive glass and we may stay in a couple spots to glass for a few hours um, just kind of depends on what we see but that is our strategy for uh, this trip so my we've been glassing down this ridge nothing 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 and my dad's like hey buck right here so we've got a good four point on our side that um, I want Casey to take a look at but um, we'll see maybe this is the one maybe not but it's nice to see a quality buck He's heavy, he's a nice typical frame. I didn't look at him for a long time, so I wanted to come grab Casey. But uh, I got a little phone scope footage of him, and um, he's real pretty. Yes, let's go see. I'm whispering in the truck. This is fun, man, I love this kind of hunting. It's a little more laid back than what we've been doing, but I absolutely love sitting behind the vortex and just glassing, glassing, glassing. In this country, you have to because, although it looks like it's so open, that sage is so tall and the buck brush is tall that you just gotta keep glass and all of a sudden one will pop out. Let's go see what Brian's got over here. That's a nice buck. Is it? Brian needs to kill him. He's got mass, he's got height. Does he have eye cards though? I can't tell, I don't have my cheaters. Oh wow.
squeeze that thing. Brian, man, what a shot. <laughs> uh, I had to shoot that buck because you spotted him. There you go. He's a rad deer. He's a rad deer. He's got a lot of mass. It's the first morning. I wanted to enjoy this hunt, but I'm telling you, there is something special about having your dad with you. And for him to spot that deer, it was just too good to, to pass up. I don't care if if we could have turned up something different. He is really cool. He's a mature buck. Yeah, he's super mature and just uh, real heavy, beautiful deer. But the best part is that old T-Mac turned him up. And to me, that's the most special part about it all. We haven't got to hunt as much doing hush. That's probably the only drawback is uh, we get real busy on hunts and haven't got to spend as much time with our dads. We did that cool Texas hunt and we're making a commitment to do more of it next year. So this was uh, less about shooting a deer and more about hanging out with my dad. But the culmination of uh, and him spotting it and just being like perfect conditions. I missed just a little bit low on the first shot, but I felt really, really, really calm on the rifle. I had everything good. I practiced and I waited for him to turn perfectly broadside and there's just like virtually no wind in Nevada which is pretty unique so I felt really comfortable and I'd been practicing that exact yardage at the range just probably four days ago now we got a buck down and I uh, can't wait to go see him pack this guy out of here and enjoy beautiful country weather be pulled it off the six and a half 300 is one of my favorite rifles yeah. without a doubt I love how it shoots if you put earplugs in too highly recommended because that muzzle brake makes it very loud, but man, it shoots so smooth, like no recoil at all. This is a this is a special little place it's turned into. Casey killed his buck a few years ago, literally right across the canyon, and uh, it took us a little bit to figure out how to get back here this morning. But sure enough, we found an awesome mature deer, enjoying some of the most beautiful Nevada public lands there is to offer, and uh, not a soul in sight. Can I just congratulate you already? <laughs> Dude, heck of a shot, man. That was insane. Dude, uh, I felt so comfortable. I was telling Brian, I said, man, not th this will sway your decision, but last year, I, or four years ago, I killed my buck down there, and so I had, to I had to hike all the way in from over there down and get him. I shot him from over there, and it was a pain in the butt. This one, just right there. And T-Max said, it will be easy if, unless he runs over the top. Yep. He's dead right there on that knob. DRT, dead <laughs> right there. Good spot and pops. Good Great spot. spot and T. That was awesome. Oh man, I think he's going to be a really good buck. He's not real wide, but he's heavy and he's yeah, tall. He's rad. Yeah. Well, well oh, good job. That's what it's all about. Gets me emotional. Uh, we get to go pack out a deer, which I'm excited about. Man, that was frustrating. Yeah, I saw the deer just go down like a sack of potatoes, but I thought we knew where we were at when we got down here. Been looking for 20 minutes. <laughs> like I said earlier, this stuff is a lot thicker and taller than you think. Couldn't figure out what purple bush it was. All I wanted to say is how about my dad's old suspenders from the 70s that are <laughs> rainbow. Those are awesome. 1969 or 70, actually 1970. Band suspenders, had to have them. Sick. Had to have them. Good luck charm today. There you go. I finally, I started ranging back where I shot and I was like, okay, we're not close enough yet. Or we're too close. Too close. So I started working back and just happened to turn. And I saw, saw his hoof up. But no way. So after what happened to Braley on her antelope hunt, my mind started racing. Like, did we, when we dropped elevation, did he get up and go somewhere? I mean, it didn't appear that way on the phone scope footage, but you just never know. But luckily, he's, uh, he's laying down there. Should we go have a look-see? Have you looked at him yet? I haven't. 
have not. Man, he's heavy and got a lot of character. Oh, wow. Wowzers. Oh, man. Hi, guards. Dude, he's way cool. Plus, he's got a crab claw on the left side. Check just, that out. Just a little inline character action. Yeah, yeah. Look at all like the... He's not playing by the rules. Yeah. Super rad character. Man, his cape, he's got a double throat patch. Yep. Neck's getting all ruddy. That's a win. Dad, That's good win. job on the glass. Turned up a great buck. He's awesome. Look at how beautiful he is. Man, he's awesome. Thanks, buddy. Thank yeah, you very wow. much. That is a mature buck. He's going to be heavy going out. <laughs> Damn, his cape's <laughs> One step at a time. <laughs> One step at a time. Like I said earlier, it's all about spending time with my pops, Casey. Had a great first evening and uh, pretty heck of a good first morning. He's beautiful though. He's gorgeous. I just love the character on his bases. Bro, <laughs> I'm so stoked for you right now. Right? He's awesome. He is gorgeous. I can't get over his cape. Just, look at look that. Look at the double throat patch. Yeah. He is a big old body sucker. Twice look at that mass. Holy moly. Oh my goodness. And yeah, he's not super wide, but he I is gorgeous. That mass. I'll take character. Yeah. When I saw this, I was like, oh, look at that thick that is. Yeah. I just love yeah. all the knobby stuff on yeah. his bases. Look at, at all this. Yeah. Yeah. He's all oh, over. He's got him on the back too a little bit. That was uh that was short but very sweet. And uh looking forward to spending time cutting up this deer with the man who taught me how to do it. Back in the day though, we used to just go only gut gut method so we'd always gut every single thing we ever killed and usually because they weren't too far away from someplace we could get them on an atv my dad is somebody who just loves the, the experience and the process of hunting and then also the kill and the breakdown meat has always been the number one reason we've hunted uh, aside from just spending great quality time with family and friends we have never ever ever worried about the size of any antler it's just uh, usually when I help my dad, I have to take his arrows and his bullets because he'll literally shoot the very first legal buck he sees, <laughs> or first legal bull, or cow, or doesn't it's even true, matter. Terry? I like the meat. What can I say? <laughs> yes, I shoot immature animals. Yes, I do. I'm guilty as Love charged. Love it. <laughs> Honestly, that's uh, that's how it used to be. You know, we were reminiscing about his dad and my grandpa and the way they used to do it back in the 50s and 60s and. Nobody cared about scores of anything like that. It was just about putting food in the freezer and getting your kids out and your family out and experiencing all this beauty that we have at our disposal. I hope this does it justice, but this is by far the biggest mule deer body I've ever seen. I know people say, oh, those are not 300 pound mule deer. This is a 300 pound mule deer, I think. Look at that. We finally, finally found where I hit him, just a little the high shoulder, which is right where I was aiming. And uh, those six and a half, 300 bullets just don't make much of a mark. It took a while. But when we were in Wyoming, Ryan Callahan was talking about a strategy he was using when he was in Alberta chasing mule deer. Because he forgot like his uh, rangefinder, binos, or something funny. And he was saying, looking for like the swoop in the back and then a big gut were what the techniques he was using and ended up that when he did that he was on the biggest mature you know antler sized mule deer and when we were looking at him in the phone scope he had both of those characteristics but then walking up on him you're just like holy cow look at the size of his i mean it looks like a giant. spike elk it does he, <clears throat> he is the biggest mule and deer i've ever seen we've killed some pretty good bodied mule deer in colorado before uh, this one is right up there though with him, I'd say. He should be. Done. Okay, so you up for a little uh, mule deer liver with lime? Oh yeah, did you pack a lime with you? Figured just raw dog it. <laughs> I didn't tell you this, Brian, but um, so Gage, we, uh, me and Logan convinced Gage he had to take a bite of the liver. No way. Straight on, put it in his mouth, swallowed it, no problem. He didn't chew it though. You guys are gonna start cutting. I'm gonna eat real quick and I'm gonna jump in there. That's what your uh, finished oh, product should look like. Mm. Just slow down. 
Let me get through this part and then we'll work on that. That's a model this year, guys. Slow down. Just slow down. What did I tell you guys earlier? He just wants to start cutting stuff. Uh, all right, so I'm definitely gonna mount this sucker. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna cape him down all the way back first, up the leg inside the armpit, back to mid body, up. We'll peel this forward all the way off to the neck. Trying to get it flushed out, save the taxidermist a little bit of work. This guy's got a lot of fat on him, which we were talking on Outlaw's Buck. You guys watched that the other day. His also had a lot of fat as did some of the pronghorn we killed in Wyoming. We're starting to wonder if there's any correlation between that and having a bad winter. Some people believe that the animals like have this intuition. They know, so they just pile the fat on if it's gonna be a tough winter, particularly if they're healthy animals. So far, we're seeing a lot, a lot of fat on everything we've shot this year. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Let us know if uh, you think there's any truth to that. Dad, when's the last time we uh, caped something out, cut something up? We didn't really Together? have to. We didn't really have to in Texas, did we? New Mexico. Yeah, huh? Yeah. That was the first time I met you guys. Yeah, 2012, New Mexico. That was a great trip, great folks. Sure changed the trajectory of my life, I know that much. Cody Lujan introduced us, one of our great buddies. Things really started to take off on this whole YouTube thing. Who would have ever thought? And if you haven't watched that elk hunt, look it up and you'll see me shoot my biggest elk. Taught him well. <laughs> so if you guys are watching the video we did with Jared Outlaw or our Instagram story, we had a time lapse on there. New technique called rib roll. And uh, we got this from Cody with Born and Raised Outdoors. You basically just start peeling the meat of the ribs and all, everything stays attached. By the time you get up to the front, you've got this one big piece of connective tissue. So it's pretty, Pretty easy to do, but you do have to be careful because you could puncture the diaphragm or the guts. But you just kind of run your knife up the rib to the top and you cut over. Then you just peel that piece of meat over and then cut right on the inside of the rib. And by doing so, then you just go over the top of the rib itself and the meat will stay attached. Just another technique of uh, getting the rib meat out. A lot of times we used to just go up each strand and you'd have these strands of rib meat. But with this technique, you could actually roll it up and cook it on like the Camp Chef smoker. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm gonna definitely try it on this deer. All right guys, that is the final product of the rib roll. Again, instead of having individual strips, we got one big piece, all connected. It's my second time doing it, but it comes out real clean on the animal. And just uh, more way to preserve as much of the meat as we can. Just pulled out the, the old tenderloin. Not my greatest work ever, but I got the heart, got all the neck meat, did the rib roll, tenderloins, back strap, quarters, hams, the whole nine yards. Now all that's left is to load up the packs and hike all the way up to the top of that. It's gonna be steep, but not long. You're carrying me, right? We're gonna. We're gonna carry the majority of the weight. <laughs> Dad can just uh, take the gun and a couple other miscellaneous pieces like maybe the tenderloin, for example. We appreciate you guys following along throughout this entire series. Can you believe uh, today marks almost 60 days? We're at day number 59 of this series and we're gonna keep on cruising. We're gonna keep on going. We got a lot of awesome stuff coming up, so please hit that subscribe button. Join us as we finish out the rest of our season. I sprayed mine off the car wash the other day. Got it all on there. It's gonna be a good one. Two hind quarters, neck meat, back strap, and a heart in a game bag. <laughs> <laughs> wrote it a Christmas song. <laughs> I've never experienced like a true hunt where you're packing something out on your back. Uh, the meat, I promise you, will taste better. You will have a better appreciation for just the whole experience because you had to work hard for it. And uh, man, there's something about it, just having like the animal that you just killed on your back and hopefully some friends and family are there with you. But I think it's become one of my favorite parts. The pain is temporary, suck is temporary, and then when you get to the truck and you have a cold drink and everything's done, you're like, man, let's go do that again. Man, that had to been one of the tougher packouts so far this year. We've had longer ones, but that was the steepest. We were here. We have made it. You guys have heard us say it before. 
the best, absolute best part of the pack out is getting to the truck. But it's like, if you've skied, if you've ever skied before, it's like taking your ski boots off after a long, hard day of powder skiing. Oh. Oh. And then you can look back and say, that was all worth it. Well worth it. Oh, these are the moments you gotta savor. Is that right. what we're calling this right now? <laughs> I'm proud of you, Pops. You're doing great. Oh, you're doing real good. Oh, man, I can't tell you how much this means to me, having my dad out here. That guy behind me is uh, it's just such an incredible person. I'm so lucky that I have a dad that is uh, so supportive and brought me out here as a kid and taught me a lot about life and a lot about the outdoors and hunting and fishing and I'm just super appreciative that he's out here with me. Love you pops. Thank you for coming out with us and uh, more importantly just thank you for everything you've done for me throughout my entire life. You are a huge inspiration, truly my hero and I uh, just love you. Love you to death. And it was all worth it. Oh, oh the relief. We made it, we survived. Nothing hurts anymore. We're just rehydrating some water, some Mountain Ops, which Casey already drank all. And uh, we're gonna make our way back to camp. Go make lunch, get this thing hung up, and probably sit back and just reminisce about how awesome of a day that just was. Well, hello again. We just made it back to camp, and we got all the meat. Not hung up, Terry had a wonderful idea. He had uh, some four-wheeler ramps, so we just put them over a log. Because the biggest thing when you're trying to cool meat is you want air all the way around it. So you don't want to lay it on the ground because the bottom side is not getting air. We put the four-wheeler ramps out and spread all the meat out to cool down. And Brian is skinning the head out. Doing the, uh, the detail work. It's kind of tedious, but if you just take your time and you have a sharp knife, just kind of slowly peel it back. I'm gonna just take my time and while the meat cools and they have brats cooking on the old uh, stove, I'm gonna do this. So I just wanted to show you camp life. This is what I enjoy a lot. Guys, take a, take a peek at camp. This is an absolute gorgeous camp spot. JJ, we got some uh, ATVs. Terry set up uh, his own tent over there. It's like a Taj Mahal over there. Because I'm old and antisocial. <laughs> Guys, this is the most beautiful thing. This is a Camp Chef fire ring. And even when there's fire restrictions in, in certain areas, you can legally have this. And it keeps you warm. And there's just something about having a fire at camp. What do you got going on there, Terry? Oh, we got some brats, we got some buns, we got some mustard. We're gonna eat, hang out by the fire, enjoy the day, and then stay here tonight, and then wake up in the morning, and just take our time and make it back to uh, Idaho. Terry's going back to Boise, and Brian's gonna come with me to Pocatello for a few days, and we're gonna go try to fill my tag in Idaho. But what a good time. Today has been absolutely awesome. And uh, just wanna tell you guys thanks for following along. As you know, we're well into this thing, it's every day. And uh, we'll be, be back tomorrow, and we'll see you then.